Uh, first for Barry, uh, uh, why did you decide to get involved with this new league? Uh, the big announcement today, um, the league launching in Dubai. Yeah, it's interesting and a really interesting project for me to be part of. I love player development. I love getting involved in projects at the grassroots level. And I love baseball. And I love teaching it. So all of those elements uh, come together in this opportunity for me. Um, I have some international experience. I actually was over uh, in India uh, as part of the uh, Sports United program uh, on behalf of the federal government that eventually led to uh, the million dollar arm. Mm. Uh, the kids that actually signed up for the million dollar arm were kids <clears throat> that participated in some of the programs that we brought on behalf of the Sports United program. So um, when I was approached with this opportunity in this part of the world, I did my research. I understood how, um, how first of all, how many people we were talking about. But because of my past experience in doing the Sports United program in India, as well as my past experience in going to Brazil and helping on behalf of Major League Baseball to raise their level of competency in baseball, <clears throat> Um, it was just in my wheelhouse, and I just felt like uh, it was a perfect opportunity uh, for me to be involved. And my involvement also uh, meant that I brought along my people that I know and trust that I thought could be very influential in helping making this happen. And that's how Cash got right. involved into the program. So we've been working together for a couple of years on some programs here locally uh, with COVID and other things that, that we've done. A very positive thing in the community. And I thought this was yet another great positive opportunity. So I brought along my buddy and here we are. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, what uh, kind of impact are you hoping that this new league uh, has on uh, people in India, Pakistan, the Middle East? Well, we know how uh, the love of cricket exists in that part of the country or that part of the world. Uh, the hope is that we can transfer some of those uh, people that love the game of cricket and to loving the game of America's pastime. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting when we look at different cultures and different co countries, it's interesting to see where their influences come from. <clears throat> and in the sporting world, much of the influence comes from right here. here. Mm -hmm. And so Major League Baseball obviously is the gold standard. Uh, and myself, Mariano Rivera is part of this project as well. Right. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you know, Major League Baseball products of Major League Baseball and opportunities for Major League Baseball. So to be able to take that to different parts of the world has been a mission of mine and a mission of Major League Baseball for, for many, many years. So, yeah, I think the impact that we're looking to to make is just to make a dent into that fan base and see if there's obviously interest in baseball. Let's see if we can bring it to the masses and have them enjoy the game of baseball much like they have enjoyed the game of cricket. And uh, uh, for Cash, um, uh, both Barry and Mariano, uh, Hall of Famers, uh, faces of two of the most historic franchises in Major League Baseball history, uh, the Reds and the Yankees, um, for two decades. Um, on top of that, both of them uh, with the experience working at expanding the game internationally, uh, did that kind of make them each uh, natural fits for this partnership? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, 19 years with the Yankees, 19 years with the Reds, mm -hmm. and, and really a lifetime of player development and a lifetime of trying to grow the game and a lifetime about being passionate about the game. And, and, and Barry's done that all over the world, in India, in Asia, in South America, and obviously here at home, here in this city that we're sitting in now in Cincinnati. Um, and Mariano's is, is, is the same way. I mean, he's, he's got an academy in Panama, been passionate about growing the game um, in his home country and across the world. And to me, that was the most uh, exciting an inspiring part of this mission is, is getting to sit next to Barry and Mariano and just hear them have such excitement and mm -hmm. um, enthusiasm for taking the game to a different part of the world, to 2 billion people, um, a billion of whom are, are cricket fans mm -hmm. and never 
picked up a, a, a baseball bat right. Right. or never used a glove. They don't use too many gloves in, in cricket, you know? Right. So um, that's, that's pretty cool because that's, that's what we're all looking to do is introduce the game the right way at a high level, at a professional level mm -hmm. to the folks out there. Um, so you guys um, have the inaugural showcase uh, in February. Um, you know, uh, what kinds of goals do you have for this league? Uh, what do you, how do you see it uh, long term looking forward? Well, the showcase is going to be exciting. The showcase is going to be exciting. Um, it's literally an introduction to the professional game of baseball for that part of the world. We're going to have four teams representing four different parts of the world. And, and basically a nine game tournament with uh, an exhibition game that's gonna be really exciting. Um, we're gonna announce the teams soon, uh, everything from where, where they're from to their, their, their team names and their jerseys. We're gonna announce the managers soon. We're gonna share rosters over the next few months. So all that's gonna be really, really fun. And, uh, and I think that our, our fans are gonna be excited to follow along and be a part of the process. Uh, and our goals for the showcase is, is to put on a show, is to put on a show. You know, like Barry likes to say, not just on the field, but before and after the game. Mm -hmm. You know, entertainment is a big part of what we're doing. We're going into the, the heart of Bollywood. We're going to a region and, and a part of the world where music and entertainment and, and dance and energy is such a huge part of the culture. So we want to put on a show during the showcase. Uh, off the field, before and after the game, between innings. And we also want to put on a show on the field with an, an elevated brand of baseball that that part of the world has yet to, to fully experience. Uh, so we're mm -hmm. excited about that. Our full season, our first full season will be in 2024. Okay. And, uh, you know, but the showcase is going to be a great first step. Cool, cool. Um... Uh, shifting gears a little bit, um, this past weekend uh, was the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, and Barry, uh, it's been uh, 10 years since you were inducted into Cooperstown. Um, looking back, uh, what, what do you remember most about that day in, uh, when you were inducted? You get old, man. You get old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it really is interesting how, how baseball just brings us all together. 10 years ago when I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, an idol of mine growing up in Cincinnati was Joe Morgan. Mm -hmm. And when I got the call that I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, the next call I got was from Joe Morgan. And he wow. said, he said, welcome to the greatest fraternity in the history of sports, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so David Ortiz and I are good friends. Uh, and when David got inducted, guess what I did? I <laughs> called him and said to him, welcome to the greatest fraternity in the history of sports. Um, it, is, it is absolutely amazing to be part um, of the Hall of Fame, to be immortalized. Uh, it, it is an unbelievable experience. And you know, I don't know what players, other players think about, but I never, ever thought about being a Hall of Famer. I certainly wanted to aspire to be an MVP, to win a gold glove, to be the best hitting shortstop or the best player or whatever. I certainly wanted to do that, be an all-star. But, you know, there are certain things that are within your grasp and things you can control. And then other things, it's just the impact that you make on other people and their determination or, or the interpretation of what you did as the baseball player. Specifically in my, in my instance, because I was the leadoff hitter, and then I was the second hitter. Then I hit third. Sometimes I hit fourth. I hit fifth as well. And I think Bob Boom maybe hit, hit me eighth <laughs> at one time. And I wasn't really happy about that, but I took that one too. So I was... Uh, call myself the amoeba man so I kind of took on different mm. forms or shapes depending on what my team needed the years that I hit the home runs 20 30 home runs is when I hit in the middle of the lineup but I need to drive in runs the mm. times that I hit for a high average and stole 50 bases is when I hit earlier up in the in the uh in the lineup so you know so 
my my impact was I guess kind of kind of a long burn, if you will. Mm -hmm. But to see David and Junior and some of these guys that are in the Hall of Fame and to be associated with them with the 700, 600, 700 home runs, you know, Ozzy and, you know, and, and Bob Gibson and Hank Aaron for crying out loud, I've got that rest of soul. You know, it's just, it is, it really truly is the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest fraternity in the history of sports. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just, it just is absolutely amazing. And it has not worn off, although it has been 10 years. <laughs> my awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I was going to uh, ask you about um, if you had a connection with uh, David Ortiz. Um, now you guys career crossed over. He was kind of taking off um, kind of sort of middle end of your career. Um, you know, obviously you won a World Series in 1990. Uh, Ortiz won uh, a few titles in Boston. Um, what was the phone call like? And uh, I don't know, just you have any memories either um, playing against him or just uh, seeing him, uh, you know, as an analyst and a broadcaster just towards the end of his career? Yeah, you know, he's he's always been that big personality. You know, he is big poppy. Um, <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things to talk to him about is Keenan Thompson with Saturday Night Night Live when he does the, you know, have big lunch with Big Poppy, that skit that he does. And I kind of make fun of him all the time when when I see one that I love. But Poppy, you know, Poppy is a great guy. You know, you know, when I do talk to him, we talk about a lot of different things. We're involved in a couple of different business ventures as well. So our all of our talk is not just baseball specific. You know, we talk about life. We talk about our kids. You know, his son is trying to, his son is playing in a league out in, I think, Boston right now, trying to get into professional baseball. He asked me about what my relationship with, was with my son, who is playing professional basketball. Mm -hmm. But you know, how, does, how does that father-son relationship work? You know, those are the type of things that we talk about. It's not just, it's not just baseball, it's life. So... Right. I said we have a couple of different business ventures that we're involved in that we work together so we talk about strategies relative to business as well so we have some great relationships but he's just a big beautiful personality always smiling seems like he never has a bad day mm -hmm. and uh you know he's just a great guy you know so those those are many of our, our conversations I didn't actually play against Bob okay um, I, don't, I don't think I, I don't think I ever uh yeah, I don't think we ever faced each other. But you know, on this, in this project, uh, one of our partners is Mariano Rivera. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately I had to face him, <laughs> but fortunately it was only in spring training, it didn't count. So <laughs> my thoughts still do remember him getting in my kitchen with that daggone cutter. I don't know how in the world, it just kind of disappeared at, at just kind of at the end. Yeah. But you know, but he's another, he's another wonderful guy, you know, I have some history with him on the field, but off the field as well. You know, he does a lot of stuff down in Panama. Uh, many years ago, um, I managed the uh, Brazilian national baseball team, and we participated in the baseball tournament WBC qualifier, much like we're going to do this September down in Panama. And, you know, Mariano Rivera is part of that down there as well. So we all, it's baseball, and, you know, there's so much overlap and there's there's so many tangents and so many relationships <laughs> that you develop through this great game. And, you know, this is something that hopefully we'll be able to bring to the GCC region. And, you know, it, it's it's that's what it's all about. You know, this is this is definitely a business venture. But the hope is at the end of the day, I can work with people that I respect and that I like, much like Cash and Mariano. And we can uh, establish relationships with people around the world and give people opportunity, yes, to be good baseball players, but to love the sport and to develop relationships through the opportunity to just meet them because they have interest in baseball. Mm -hmm. And that's really been my experience. My experience has been that, you know, I played baseball for 19 years. I, I did. Well, I played baseball for many, many years, but professional baseball for 19 years. 
And you know what? I am a ex baseball player, mm-hmm. right? But I am a man and I have those relationships and those relationships will hopefully stay with me for the remainder of my life, which hopefully is long, right? Much longer than I was a baseball player. Mm-hmm. So that's really the hope and the vision, at least in my mind. <clears throat> mm-hmm.